Hi everybody, so this video has been probably one of my most requested videos ever and it's how to edit on a light motion or like how to use it. Um, I made a part one of this which is doing really well so if you need to see that I have the link will be in the description actually so I'm just gonna review refresh your mind whatever first what you want to do when you open a light motion you'll see this screen what you want to do is you want to go to the little plus sign right here you're going to tap it now there's a whole bunch of different settings which the most basic settings that I use and that you're probably going to use is one to one which is just like a basic square the resolution you can change that to whatever you want but I usually do 1080p my frame rate is always 60 frames per second and my background is always black you can title it whatever you want you don't have to but then you're gonna hit create project then you want to hit the plus sign and then you have a whole bunch of options. It says shapes, image and video, audio, elements, freehand drawing, vector drawing, and text. If you want to just start off your edit, you want to go ahead and hit image and video. If you have an audio, you can add it in. Um, I don't have an audio right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and add in my image. I'm going to be showing you how to do a few more basic transitions on this app. Because that's been really requested. Because I think in the last one did like a spin and a zoom in but this time I'm gonna show you how to do like slides and like different free transitions so once you add your photo in you're gonna have all these different options you're gonna have color and fill border and shadow blending and opacity move and transform edit points and effects so if you want to add in a transition what you want to do is hit effects add effect and then all these different categories come up drawing color and light blur Procedural, is that how you say it? I don't even know. <laughs> Distortion slash warp, 3D, move and transform, repeat, matte, mask, key, opacity, visibility, edge, and other. My main category that I use is probably distortion slash warp because it has like the most like cool effects, I guess you could say. What you want to do is you want to scroll down to the bottom and find tiles. You're going to want to hit tiles. And then you have the options of crop, offset, mirror, offset, vertically, and angle. You're going to want to hit mirror right here like that. And then you're going to want to hit this little arrow. And if you want to do like a slide, what you're going to want to do... Oh, wait, I think... No. <laughs> I'll just show you how to do a zoom in first. So you want to hit this little arrow right here. And then you're going to want to scroll to where it only says like 1.00. Then you're going to want to hit this thing right here where it crops off the end of the picture so it like deletes it. Then you want to go ahead and find in your other video or picture, whatever you're using. Oh, also, if you wanted to fit it in the screen, you hit these three dots right here. Like, if it's not cropped the way you want it. And then you have save to my elements, flip horizontally, flip vertically, fit screen, fill screen, and stretch to screen. I always hit fill screen because it just makes it easier and it fits the like video better, I guess. And then you want to scroll to where it says 2 dot dot zero zero and then hit the same trimmer you used before and just hit it like that. So that way your pictures are the same length and duration. It's the same thing. Anyways, so now that this picture has tiles on it, what you want to do is you're going to want to go to move and transform and then you have these options like the weird arrows and then like the square with the arrows and then this you're going to want to hit this right here and this is your zoom in panel i guess so keyframes a lot of people have been wondering what those are keyframes are these little diamonds right here with the pluses in them they basically just help you like start and end your transitions so if i wanted to start a transition you're going to want to hit the keyframe you can add, you always have to add two or more keyframes to whatever you're doing or else it just, like, won't work. So add in your first keyframe and whatever, like, like if you zoom it out right now, that's what it's going to be for the whole photo. So, like, I zoom it out right here. Then that's just what the whole photo is going to look like. Like, it's, nothing's going to be different. But that's because you didn't add a second keyframe. So, I'm going to get rid of this, just to give you a better example of what it actually does. So, add in two keyframes. And on your second one, which is going to transition into the next picture, you're going to want to zoom in as much as you want. You don't have to do a lot. I usually do, like, a regular number, like, a solid big number. 
so I, that I can remember it. So I'm just going to do 4,000 PX on this one. Then you have these three options, which is the back arrow, the delete your keyframe, and the copy in the graph. So you want to hit the graph. Go in between your keyframes. So a lot of people have been having troubles. You're like, my graph's sho not showing up. My graph isn't moving. Why not? If you have it on the first keyframe, it's not going to move because you have to be in between the two photos in order for the graph to work. So there's these options, which are just like you can move the graph and adjust it yourself. This one kind of just does it for you. Like these three right here, I'll do it for you. So this is to help you transition into the next photo. And this one right here is to help you like end your transition. And this one's just like neutral, I guess. But I always usually make, I always usually use this one. That was like not even English. I always use this one and I pull them to like right here. So it's like kind of the normal size. And then your keyframes, your first one, you're gonna wanna move it to the beginning of your picture. And this keyframe, you're gonna wanna move it to the end of your picture. Like that, it's like a zoom in. So on your second photo, remember, tap it, go to effects, add effect, go to the distortion category, scroll all the way to the bottom, add tiles, hit mirror, hit that, and then hit the back arrow. Go back on the move and transform, hit this thing right here, add your keyframes, and on the first keyframe this time, you're gonna wanna zoom in the exact amount you did the last time, or somewhere near that number. So we zoomed into 4,000 last time. We're going to do that again. And then once again, go to the graph. Now the graph for this one is a little different because this is like your ending graph. So for your ending graphs, I recommend this one or this one. I always use this one. And you're going to want to take this little thing and pull it all the way up to the top. And then this one and move it a little bit this way. And then you're going to want to move your transitions to the end of your photos, which you can just hold on them. And move it to wherever you'd like. And motion blur is optional. Just makes your picture look a lot smoother. So you're going to want to go to the blur category. And then add motion blur right here. So it looks a lot more smoother. Once again, effects, add effect, blur, and then go to motion blur. So that was like how to do a zoom in transition, a smooth zoom in transition. So now I'm just going to show you how to do like a slide. So we're going to get rid of these keyframes. Okay, and now. You want to keep tiles and motion blur on there because those are probably the most basic effects you're going to use on light motion. You're probably going to use them in like every transition. So now you want to go to, I'm going to show you how to do a tile rotate. So now you're going to want to go to add effect, go to distortion slash warp. And by the way, all of these transitions that I'm using are going to be free so everybody can have a chance to use them. You're going to want to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you're going to want to find tile rotate. So click on it, and you're probably going to be like, oh my god, what am I going to do? So if you want to like make it like a regular one, you can just go to amount and then go to 5.1 or 5.0, whatever one you want. You're going to hit these three dots right here and click copy effect. This will just make it easier so you don't have to go and like rotate and scroll to the right amount. That made no sense. You're going to scroll to the right amount. And then on your rotation, it's going to say 45.0 degrees. You want to make that zero. So once again, your picture can start off like a regular picture. Add your keyframes, which is the diamonds with the pluses in them. And once again, always on the second keyframe, you're going to want to rotate it to whatever you feel is best. I always usually rotate it to 180. And then once again, hit on the graph. Go in between the keyframes so it does move. Hit the last, hit the first one actually, I'm stupid. And then copy my graph. And then you can move your keyframes. This one to the beginning and this one to the end. So this starts off as a tile rotate transition. Once again, tap on the photo, hit effects, add effect, distortion slash warp, tile rotate. Well actually since you copied the effect, you hit these three dots right here and then hit paste effect so it's just easier we can adjust that if you need to 
Now you're going to want to go and scroll. Don't add any keyframes yet. This is just like an easier way to do it. You want to scroll and find like maybe like 270 or something. Add that keyframe right there. And then on your second keyframe, scroll to 360 degrees so it makes it like even, I guess. Hit the graph. Go in between the keyframes. Hit the last graph so it's like ending your transition. Move this up. Move your keyframes wherever you want them to be, beginning and end. And that is how you do a tile spin transition. So I hope this video helped you guys understand a little bit more what the basics of A-Light Motion are. I know the app does not look easy to use, but trust me, when you keep practicing, it gets so much easier to use. Um, yeah, if you guys would like a part three, just let me know. Um, I hope this video helped you out, and yeah. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram, a link in description, and part one of this video will also be in the description too. So yeah, bye!